box in a place called Dunham on Acker Island to live by the sea because of the catch fish. So what they had left was all these buildings, but to the side of it was the peat box. And one other kind of feeling that look at the peat box in South Wales in the mines. And there seemed to be this kind of and this kind of sense of urgency of wanting to get something finished and completed by the end of the day where right. this other painting took much longer. I, if I say what my father's coal miner, uh, I come from the valleys of South Wales, I think of an example called the Lemon Plus. So it, my job was going to be to go down the coal mine uh, and work in a factory. And an art teacher came along and said, you can paint pictures like that. He said, this is something wrong with you. You've never said anything nice about your shows before. And what I thought was, well, whoever wants to knock the exhibition on the car, I think that there's a consistency. I've stayed true to what I tried to do uh, 40 years ago. And then the No, I mean this particular yeah. this sea is um, the Irish sea is yes. quite a lot to the sea across as a kid. Thank you. 
Test of one. shows which have had single pieces of Peter's work in and this particular project was coming together three years ago and Peter asked me to write about the work and I was interested probably in writing about work he hadn't done at that stage because I knew he had this interesting plan to paint the sea so um, my involvement has been gradual through knowing the work and, and and writing about it, and then eventually uh, curating a retrospective, which is a special sort of show where an artist can s and the public can review a uh, career almost. Yeah. How, what was your criteria for selecting the paintings in the gallery today, and, and how difficult was it? Well, curating an exhibition means a lot of discussion with the artist, it means thinking about the space where the paintings are going to go, it means what story do you want to tell, is there a narrative here, or the, well there are tons of narratives here of different aspects of his career, what, what are you going to emphasise, um, and a lot of talk about painting and drawing and how meaningful it is to Peter and what he's tried to do with it over the years. So gradually, um, Peter's not so hugely prolific painter, um, um, so, but there are some very important pieces and what we've tried to do is bring together enough of those pieces so that people realise, oh yes, that was happening then as well. Uh, all the time though, I've had in my mind what he's been building up to, because for me the revelation of the show is yes, seeing all the world and the last 20 of years and, and more. Where, I mean, the earliest work in the show is a childhood drawing when he was age 12 of a quarry. Um, and it's almost as if, you know, he was, he was in some ways a fully formed artist before he trained, before he knew about other artists. Or, and it's just sort of seeing that sort of explosion of Peter's uh, life's work that I think the show really holds. Um, so that dictated certain pieces, but we got talking about all this quarry theme, age 12, mid 80s he's doing it, he's even doing the quarries now, or Penguin Quarry recently, um, was that a thread? But there was this, this other th 
thing going on, which was his own personal quarry or quest to really find the painting that satisfies him at a certain time, which means you know a lot of a lot of the paintings get worked on, um, studied, reworked, built up until you know finally satisfies him. And I think the painting behind me is sort of fantastic conclusion to a, a, just a space of work. He's going to go off and do something else now and paint something else, but but there's like a very serious campaign has gone on to get to this very dramatic picture that's behind me. I just going to say, I've always been asking kids on just towards the end. Just towards the end, just sort of talking about the final painting. I'm just sorry, I'm just going to ask one question. Would you mind use it as part of whatever's happening tonight? So it might be, you might have a, a, a that, that lower level. Yes, that would work. That would work. Because if you just grab it, you know, rather than just going to bounce over. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think I'd like to use it in two contexts. So, yeah. so just to be in what way do you think what we're seeing here is a culmination of this work? Well, I mean, one knows he's going to go on and carry on painting, but. Certainly, there's a feeling in which, when you go from the early work, um, oh, sort of like sorry, tape. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, oh, sorry. 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 In what way is what we're seeing, or what, like, in what way are the, are the latest paintings, if you like, a sort of combination of or a turning point? Or a well, there's a real journey in, in the work, and I think there's difference in different periods of how how it's been working. I think there are, you get a feel for that as you walk around this exhibition. If anything, I think there's something happening which maybe the sea paintings have allowed even more to happen in this work, which is the paintings have got freer in some ways. So, you know, the, the first paintings from Bethesda are quite tight. Very, very structured, rather heavy, you know, even though they're quite blazing. It's kind of, but they're, they're. So sorry, I don't know what that means. I'm so sorry. It's called Sod's Law. Sod's Law. Yeah. Sod's Law. 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 Sod
rather blockish. Maybe that's another thing that's evolving in, in the work. Can I choose a few of the works that Pete has talked about um, as being uh, key, key, key works, if you like? Um, one of them being the Aboriginal paintings of the terraces. And yeah. it, how would you describe Peter's style in those paintings and what your projects would see? Well, remarkable for a 12 year old. I know she had been doing paintings like that for 12. I, they, they just feel like they already have that intuitive response, you know. It's almost as if uh, he probably had to unlearn an awful lot when he started actually knowing what painting was about and then slowly refined everything that painting meant to him. Uh, so, it's, uh, it's like the words of his poem, you know, the child is father to the man. I think it's all there at, at, at the beginning. It's like a seed that's been planted, and that's very special. And I think we do value artists that have that. Not all artists are like that. We wouldn't do if the world was full of artists that were like that. But, but Peter is one of those artists that um, sort of grows like a you know, planted plant. Some people talked, uh, I think in one of his late students talked about Catholic gardens as being one of his first yeah, yeah. In what way would you say is it one of his? Well, that's, that's interesting because it, it's a painting which I felt it had to be in the show, but I thought it was very, it was sort of out of the limb in some ways because it's A, it's urban. Uh, there's, you know, there, aren't, there are little, small evidences of, of uh, dwellings and, and, and places. In, Um, I think it. I think it needs to be there at the beginning of the show to show this painter is really interested in how do you bring together colour, structure, atmosphere, so that you read this place, but you also read it as a painting. And it's almost as if he's thinking, okay, Cezanne, <laughs> um, what, how would he have done it? Well, you know, there are all sorts of probably ideas playing about in his mind at that time as a youngish student faced with all sorts of forces around it. You've also got to realise, I think, that Peter starts painting and his painting is sort of unfashionable almost straight away, in the sense that, you know, the pop art period's coming along, people are using photography, the whole, and he knows he's a painter. And he just, he holds to that faith, if you like. Of painting is, is not exhaustive. It's not exhausted what it conveys. It doesn't, it's not exhausted what it can convey to people. You do have to take into account all the th movements of painting that have gone on. You've got to understand them because there's a history there. But the language is not exhausted and um, I think it you know, carries on proving that's the case. A lot of modern painting is you know, very ironic. It's um, postmodern in the sense of uh, it, it's like a double take on art. It's joking. Painting for Peter is an extremely serious business. It's a philosophical business. And it's a physical business, always. Um, well, one, more, one particular thing, other painting I want to ask you about is the uh, Place de Quarry paintings. In what way did that mark a, a, a significant change in Peter's style? Did it mark a significant change, or was it just natural evolution in Peter's style when he came back to Northwood and started painting yeah. the quarries? Yeah. I, well, every painter needs to find his subject, uh, you know, Rembrandt it may well have been uh, himself. Uh, uh, every painter needs to find that subject at a time that it sort of begins to be meaningful to them. And uh, okay, Peter was teaching in Liverpool, New North Wales, secondly, I think probably you know impressed by the fact that his background was one. Physical, uh, his father was a miner, and he had that feeling for the in, uh, that industrial landscape. Um, and um, you know, the essential thing he's showing there is it, it is a worked landscape. He's working the landscape in his painting. He's almost trying to find an equivalent to the labour that's gone in to extract the thing from the mountain. And it's a, it's like a physical challenge. Can can my labour also be paralleled with their labour who you know the, and of course that was also ending so there was a, there was a sort of melancholy about the paintings as well uh, but at the same time there's a physical energy about the paintings 
because obviously he was going to give new life to the quarry by giving it a paint and an existence as a painting as opposed to a place of, of crushing work. But just the bits of getting a bit of background towards the last half of that last set. Okay. I think I'll go. Uh, he, he is greatly respected by um, some of the people who other people see as him being the imitator of. So, you know, somebody like Frank Hartbach is somebody who writes to Peter, who's very encouraging. The paintings are nothing like those, those type of works, but it is too easy just to, for the art world perhaps just not look at the paintings as how it's like so and so. And that's one of the most difficult things for a painter to do because Peter actually respects an awful lot of painting out there and knows that he's learned from it. He's learned from you know, Rembrandt's in the National Gallery. He's learned from his teachers like Frank Auerbach. But he knows that the challenge has been to create his own idiom. And there's nothing in my mind that's like a Peter Prentice. Um, you know, just as there isn't anything quite like a Frank Auerbach so I think he's, you know, and this show, I think, shows that idiom growing, developing, finding one formulation for it, and then moving on to something else. All the time with a terrific integrity about um, and a da sense of danger. He, you know, he doesn't know what the painting is going to really, yeah, and he doesn't use tricks, and he doesn't, I think he doesn't really repeat himself. I think that, you know, anathema is, do it again. Do more of the same. No way. You won't find it. I'm uh, going to guess this working like that. Okay. And in what, to what extent do you call him a landscape artist? Because it's bright. Yeah, well, I think it was important in the selection of the show to show him as a portraitist. He's a great portraitist. Um, um, he is, I mean, he is principally a landscape artist. There's no doubt about that. Um, but he, lo he looks a bit. Like Courbet painted landscapes of the sea, so there's a, an interesting shift when he does shift seascapes. That, that um, you know he throws out the rule book again, and uh, um, it almost it's almost as if the sea sort of takes his bearings away. And, and I think that's a mark of a, a very interesting landscape painter. That he, he's not just drawn to the same view painting, if you like. It's not view painting. Has to find another painter called a motif, something that engages him. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much, David. Right. 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 Wonderful. Right. We'll just do a look, picture the paintings now, and obviously it will be much nicer. <laughs>
mae'n gweld, ond dwi'n gweithio fyddwch chi'n mynd i'n clywad. Rhysych chi'n ysych chi ar y wasfa yma o waith. Peter Prendergast, mae hi'n noson arbennig iawn i ni fel oriel yma oriel nes môn. Gan mae hon y dyr ar y wasfa fwyaf sy'n i'n dweud o'i math i ni i threfnu ers nifer o flynyddoedd ac yn sicr yr undeithio fwyaf ers dros ddigawd. Mae hi yn ddeuddeg mynydd mwyn y lai i'r noson ers i ni agor ar y wasfa ddwytha o waith Peter yn ôl yn 1994. I first talked to Peter about this, this exhibition about uh, four or I think it was five years ago now and I was delighted that uh, he accepted the invitation and agreed to commit himself to it. The idea of a major retrospective exhibition gradually evolved from those early discussions including the idea of, uh, of a book to mark Peter's career. I'm del delighted that the book has been published and is available this evening. It's literally hot off the press, it arrived about four o'clock this afternoon, thanks to uh, Simon of Seren, and I'm sure most, if not all of you, have seen the book. It is uh, for sale here this evening. It's a splendid book, and the uh, contribution of the essays to have, have written um, different aspects of Peter's career um, is, is splendid. And our thanks go to Seren um, for publishing it. And I'm told that Peter has um, volunteered to, uh, to sign copies, so if you can find him, before the end of the night, Peter has said he'll be uh, he'll he'll sign copies. Um, I'm sure Nicola Gibson, our art officer, would agree that it's been so pleasing to be able to work uh, alongside other major galleries and institutions during the course of the exhibition. And we borrowed works from the Tate British Museum as well as other many organisations and indeed uh, from private individuals. We're extremely grateful to them for um, all their support and cooperation. We've also, once again, worked closely with the National Museum of Wales um, as part of our ongoing partnership scheme, really, uh, sharing treasures funded by the, the Welsh Assembly. And the exhibition following its showing here will tour to four other venues. Uh, and we're grateful, of course, to the Arts Council for funding the exhibition as a major touring show. Um, most importantly, we've been able to draw on the immense experience and knowledge of uh, David Alston as a guest curator for the exhibition. And David, as I'm sure many of you know, now works as the Arts Director, newly appointed for the Arts Council of Wales, and we wish um, David luck in his new post. And David's involvement in curating the show alongside Nicola has been an invaluable aspect, which has included the selection, uh, the contributing to the, to the book, and also the exhibition layout itself. O mae'r sawl sydd am agor yr arddangosfa i ni heno yn edmygwr brwd o waith Peter Prendergast. Dyma'r tro cyntaf o agor arddangosfa yma yn oriol nes môn, ac wrth gwrs dan ni'n falch iawn i fod o wedi cytuno i wneud hynny. Yr arglwydd David Elis Thomas ydy aelod cynulliad dros ffurionydd a chonwy, a mi fynd llywydd y cynulliad ers ei agor yn 1999. Mae o'n ffigwr cyfarwydd iawn i ni gyd, wrth gwrs. Mae o'n gynd ar lifydd prifysgol, I fydd o'n aelod syneddol rhwng 1974 ac 1992 ac yn aelod o dyr arglwyddi hefyd ers 1992. Mae o'n gyn gadeirydd gwrdd Gymraeg a fod i llywydd Prifysgol Cymru yn Mangor. Yn wneud dyddo, wrth reswm, mae gen ddyfod i ordeb yn atblygiad datganoli yng Nghymru a sefyllfa Cymru fel rhanbarth o fewn Ewrop. Mae ei ddiddor debat tu allan i waith yn amlwg yn cynnwys y celfyd yda a mae nhw'n nhau cerdded a mynd ddod yn ei wrtholeth. Yn bwysig cell na'n dyn byd arall, mae yn ymwelchion y ffaith fod o wedi ennill y wobr am y gwleidydd mwy a trwsiadus o ran gwys yng Nghymru. Felly mae'n bleser gen i alo i'r llwyfan i agor yr arddangosfa mae heno. Yr agwydd David Elis Thomas. Diolch yn fawr, I shall be speaking in English and Welsh as I professionally do and uh, I hope I'll be equally intelligible in both. I've been warned not to be controversial <laughs> this evening. But I would like to pose the question uh, as to what we are doing this evening. A huge crowd of us gathered together in this elitist space in the middle of Anglesey. 
or so some people would want to describe it. We have come here for different motivations. We have come here because we have an interest, obviously, in the artist himself as a personality. And I do hope that Peter, if he is listening, wherever he's hiding, uh, will be able to say something to us at the end because my admiration for him is not only, of course, in terms of the work we see here tonight, but his tremendous influence as a teacher over generations of younger, if I can use that phrase, painters, and also his influence on the public in terms of teaching us about visual art. We have come because we admire him. We have come also because we have a consciousness of the importance of visual art in our society in Wales, a consciousness of what visual art gives us. I've been reading a lot more nonsense recently about the importance of having national icons. I believe this referred to England this time. I thought England had enough national icons, but they were going to have some more and they were going to label them. Then I heard a very silly discussion this morning on Good Morning Wales about what it meant to be Welsh. And because I was coming here tonight for my love for Peter and his work, it occurred to me that what Peter gives us, is giving us this evening, is a clear, concise and obvious explanation of what it means to be Welsh, and it doesn't require any further definition. It is to enjoy and celebrate a making and a remaking of our landscape, our heritage, our culture, and, dare I use such a word, and our class background, whatever that may be. So, I am here to celebrate in inadequate words, which is what politicians always have, and if I may say so, some politicians in the last few days have had more inadequate words than usual. <laughs> what I've been trying to say in inadequate words is to try to share in words, verbally, the sense of what Peter's visual style is. I love looking at the development and changes of technique and medium throughout his career. But in particular, I like and, and rejoice in the fact that in every medium, and at all times in his career, there is that exuberance of the movement across the canvas, which is a sign of life in, in art, and the remaking of the social and landscape life around in art. And I'll tell you which is my favorite. It's the one over there. It's the violet acrylic one. And it is like all his work almost. It's about the painter and the studio and the surroundings. And the, the work moves in and out in its color. And you don't know where the artist begins, where the studio is, or where the surroundings stop. And that again is the exuberance of the connection in his art. So it gives me a great, great pleasure, and I'm coming to the end of my first piece in English, and the bit in Welsh is even worse. It gives me great pleasure uh, to declare this exhibition open as if it needed to be declared open, because it is the book of a life, the like of which we have not seen uh, in art in Wales, outside the great life of Peter Prendergast. My blessed are many gimme galbodemai, a corner than us from an swedokal. Agi that can we secret cal well a dollar fob cal and not black yard divisiant and me. Ag my gwaith Peter ama heddiw i arddull o i ymroddiad o a'i yrfa a'i hanes o. Mae pera'r un dod Peter Prendergast o dde Cymru i'r gogledd o un gymuned ddosbarth gweithiol no fawl Seisneg yn bennaf i iaith erbyn, 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 erb
i'r adeg pellach erbyn hyn o'r gwmpas ag y tridwr. Ond i ddod i fyny yn ôl yma i'r gogledd ag i ardal Bethesda ac i'r rhan rhyfeddol yna o'r carnedda. Yn gyrwyr fel mae'r rhan â helaeth o'r yr un. Lle mae'r diwydiannol, y dyarregol yn atyriol a'r cymdeithasol mewn rhywbeth fath o frwydu'r barhaus hefo ei gilydd. A dwi'n meddwl mod i'n deall yn union beth ydy'r teimlad yna sydd gan Peter. Oherwydd dwi yn ei cael nhw bob tro byddai'n gyrru trwbyn a ffestiniog am hynny o leiad ddwyfaith ac yn amlach bob wsnos. Oherwydd be mae'r er, tîr wedd a'r tîr lun yna yn ei gyflau i mi, dwi'n sicr am ein cyfrau i Peter. Ydy yr hanes diwydiannol y cyffro a greo y cymunedau dros barthweithio chwarelyddol. Ond ar yr un pryd, yr hyfeddod yn y tirwedd naturiol o gwmpas. Ac yna yr ynni mawr sydd wedi ddod o gloddio yn y lle yna. Dyna pan dwi'n mor ffond o deitl y llyfr a theitl yr arddangosfa yma hynna. Sef y chwarael yma y mae'r peintiwr hefyd wedi cloddio ac wedi adgynnyrchu o hon. Mae'r ynni yna i gyd ar waith ac mae'r ynni yna yn daslu mewn modd na all bleidyddion a llenorion y gair ysgrifenedig i wneud. Y peth sy'n dod agosau i mi yng ngwaith Peter oherwydd yr holl symudedd sydd yna fo ydy dawns neu gelf symudol. Oherwydd mae yna gymaint o symud ar draws y canfas i mewn ac allan o'r canfas bron yn ei waith o bob amser. Ac felly mae'n bleser arbennig i mi gyda ddychydig eiri yna i ddatgan noson yma ar agor ar ddangos yma ar agor ac i ddweud i'n bell yr agod wi a chithau i gyd yma hyn o'n y cwestiwn y da ni'n dymuno byw mewn Cymru sydd yn wlad Ewropiaidd waraidd a datblygedig lle mae celf flyngar waith bynnag bo nifer y bobl yma hyn apelio i ni lle mae celf flyngar yn rhan hanfodol o'n bywyd Os a ddim byd yn eilig taith, mewn dod yma heno i oriel yn eis môr, mae o'n bleser pyr i'n ei gyd. Diolch yn fawr i chi a diolch i chi. Os yn i hoffi diolch i Agwydd Dafydd Elis Thomas am i ei credig ac am agor yr adnosfa heno. I've already mentioned and thanked a number of people and organisations, but the biggest thanks of all, of course, goes to Peter himself who agreed to allow us to host this major exhibition, which is, uh, as Lord Ellis Thomas and Peter himself have said, is a celebration of his career. I must also thank Nicola Gibson, who has curated this, ex this exhibition on behalf of the Oriel, alongside David Alston, and of course the rest of the Oriel team here, who put the exhibition together and travelled far and wide across um, Britain to collect the work. Dyna ddiwadd yr Elfyn Thirfiol ar wahan un uh, come on back. I know that Peter would like to say a few words to uh, conclude the formal part of the evening. Peter Pendergast. I, I actually said that I wasn't going to say anything, but I realise I need to thank a lot of people for the fact that this exhibition is here. Uh, they know who they are. Uh, Nicola, Oriol and Smallman, Alan, for instigating this idea uh, four years ago. Uh, it's taken four years to organize, and it's taken me 40 years to get the work together. Um, and it's a great thanks to, to David Alston, who curated the exhibition, and was able to sort of take away the work, which was full of influences and no relevance, so that we were left with a work which I felt was truly, really my own. 35 years ago, or 40 years ago, I started painting pictures when I was 12 years of age. Um, I was brought up in a working class coal mining village and failed a thing called the 11 plus. Um, and it was because of a good art teacher I started, started painting pictures. And those first two paintings are the beginning of the exhibition. Um, so the exhibition really is, is about trying to find out. At the end of the day, up to the new paintings which are on Turellin, and on on this morn, whether in fact I've been true to my own vision and my own personality, um, or was I just simply full of influences. 
So that's what it's about. 35 years ago, I decided, I made a conscious decision that I'd come and live in Bethesda with my wife. And the conscious decision was that I would live in an area which was Welsh, which was Welsh speaking, um, where I could bring up my children if we had any children, and luckily we managed to have four children, and that I would try to prove that you could paint pictures not living in London. I didn't make that decision upon my own. It was a great friend of mine, a painter called Len Tabner from Yorkshire, who convinced me, why do you need to go to London? He was going back to Yorkshire. So the challenge was to come and live in Wales, contribute to the culture of Wales, and to see if I could compete outside of Wales. That's what the challenge is. I remember when I first I got to North Wales, got to Bethesda, where I lived for 20, 25 years, um, and I telephoned a man, the only man who ran a gallery in, um, in Bangor, and I asked him, was there any teaching work around you? And there I said, it was Gwyneth Technical College. And he said, I do all the teaching around here. And that's what it was like. You know, since then a lot of people have come and lived and contributed to living in North Wales, to contribute to the visual arts. I think it's important when people talk about uh, um, extending, uh, making sure the money is well spent on the arts in Wales, that we don't spread the butter so thin that there's no taste left. I came, I came from an environment which had no, no paintings, no books, and the thing, my father was Irish, and the thing that I was told about was that you went away to be educated and to raise standards. And what mustn't happen in Wales, through any cultural minister, what mustn't happen is we mustn't dumb down in the visual arts or in any of the arts in Wales. We must make sure that we continuously supporting high standards. I asked David Ellis Thomas to open the exhibition, maybe because of politics, but really because of the fact that I've known him for a long time, I know he's got a sense of humour, but I know that he dearly loves the visual arts. And that was really important to me. And I think we should remember that we might not have the Opera House and we wouldn't have the Assembly Building by Richard Rogers if it hadn't been for the kind of vision and the determination of people like David Alice Thomas. Because there were many negative people who didn't want anything to happen in the Bay in Cardiff. And these are things which the future of Wales is going to depend upon, that we'll have things which are really special. And if anybody has seen the Richard Rogers Building, from the sea looking towards the bay, we'll begin to realise what a wonderful building it's going to be and what we lost if we didn't have the Opera House built. Thank you very much for coming to my exhibition. Um, I don't want to say anything about it. You have to make your own sense of whether the work has any value or not. I must say for the first time, I always thought that when you played a game of rugby, if you weren't nervous before a game, then you were going to have a bad game. And a friend for me, a friend of Yorkshire again, said, what's the exhibition like? I said, it's actually, it's rather beautiful. He said, is, is there something gone wrong with you? <laughs> and what I meant by that was, whatever is here, I couldn't have done it any other different kind of way. It is what it is. It's been really well put together by Aurelia this morning. They've been incredibly professional. Nicola, Alan, and especially John Smith, a lot of people who worked here, but particularly the way that David Austin, regardless of fees or money, has been determined to make sure that this is a really well hung exhibition. Thank you very much. We'll start the Thank you.
think that, I think the exhibition looks wonderful. I think these paintings and this exhibition will stand up anywhere that I've ever been for looking pictures. And when I spoke to you earlier last year, back in April and May, and you were working on these sea paintings, you seemed a bit disconcerted that I didn't say anything about them. Um, you know, I don't talk about paintings too much, because it's more important to get on and do them. But they're cracking good paintings, that's all I have to say. Peter, I gather this is a, a personal um, thing for you. I'm standing in front of one of your earlier things of the quarry. I remember going up there one day and finding a piece of slate with paint on it, and I was told it was your palette where you had been painting. Uh, congratulations on your exhibition. Uh, obviously, the, the Bethesda views for me are the most significant. But I'm sure as I go around the exhibition, I will see a lot more that um, are going to, like the New York one I'm looking at now, are going to mean something special. Um, congratulations again. I wish you the best for the tour and with the book, which I shall be getting shortly. Cheers. Uh, Peter, I thought I'd give you a few night, night thoughts. There were probably times when you thought this was never going to happen. In fact, I know there were times when you thought this was not going to happen. And I'm just so pleased that everything did come together so well. Come with me then. Right. Can I do it? Two of us or three of us? Three of us. Three, yeah. Three. 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 Three.